Welcome back, kittens. This is uh, Krosis and Krosis Gaming. We are back with West of Loathing. I am loving this game. I uh, really want to get further. This game cracks me up every time I play it. Um, feeling a lot better today. I don't feel so sick anymore. Um, I just want to play this game. <laughs> I'm just kind of tired. I've been uh, pretty busy the past couple of days, but... Uh, yeah, we are, where are we right now, actually? Are we still, we're still at the Stearns Ranch. Um, I believe this is the place where the doll was. We read the diary, there was an evil doll. Um, I don't think there's anything else to do here. No, we're going to go to the Daveyard. We're just going to go nup, uh, nup. We're just going to go up. All right, as you're riding along, you see some braided fuses sticking out. A nearby rock. Investigating it more closely, you see that somebody drilled a hole in the rock and inserted a bunch of dynamite, but apparently lost interest and wandered away without sending it off. Or maybe they were just out of matches. Take the dynamite. You know what pisses me off? Oh, look, two dynamite. This is what pisses me off about dynamite now. It's so easy to get, and I'm still pretty sure I missed a secret in the very beginning town that you can't go back to now. And I needed two more dynamite. So we are in the graveyard. Died with his boots on, but not his pants. <laughs> okay, dig up the grave. You dig up the grave just to check the veracity of the epitaph. Sure enough, boots, but no pants. You got an item, brown boots. Can I wear the brown boots? I'm wearing the brown boots. What do they do? One AP? I like it. Dude, I have a ton of shit. I don't know what to do with any of it. Okay. Did I say suck certificate? Oh, stock certificate. <laughs> I have a certificate suck, if you know what I mean. Alright. This remain, uh, this, these remains look pretty reckless. Put them down for good. Bite them. You got to jump on them this time. Are we gonna shoot them? Oh, that's right. I had to, oh, I can do that now? Hell yeah, do it. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, she only does three damage, but no point in healing. Alright, shoot him again. Boom. Yeah, it does five poison. That's the thing I like about that guy. But she's gonna kill him anyways. Boom. Ten experience. So yeah, Alice is the one that's all interested in the dead people rising. Went down in a theater. Here lies Dave C. Here lies Dave J. Rapapow. This, this remains... Rips, 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 fight him, fight him, fight him. Alright, shoot him. Boom. So, um... Last thing I did before this episode was I did the live stream for uh, for SCP Containment Breach, and I feel like we're pretty close to the end of that, so we're probably going to beat that pretty soon. Um, guys, I need ideas for games. I mean, I have a ton of games, but I just don't know what you guys want to see. Um, I mean, I'll find something, but if you guys have ideas, tell me, because I really would like ideas from you guys um but i kind of want to do undertale because i've never played undertale and i heard it's a really good game um here live save l died of a heart attack seeing in 36 years here lives Dave g he was looking to sit uh, to the sky to save him but even the sky can't save a feller from like 40 angry bears <laughs> nice here's Looks like the Grave Digger left his lunchbox. Oh boy, free lunch. You got an item. Vienna blood sausages and thermos of spiked coffee. And they said there was no such thing. Right? These bones are jumping around to beat the dickens. Beat the dickens out of them. Alright. Let's shoot him. Poison him. You can shoot him too. Hopefully he... Oh, he's immune to poison. Oh, he used some kind of mysticality thing. I like that triple shoot thing. That's really useful. Cause
cut him. <laughs> All right, you got an item skull chips and item skeleton bone. You know, he checked the bones for Dickens. Nope, you beat them all up. Nice. Um, that knife I have is the varmint knife. We have varmint skin and knife. I wonder if you get extra items no matter what you kill, but you have to kill it with the knife. Oh, I didn't mean to go in here. No, I'm not ready for that. I want to read these. Your lives, Dave D. The truth was out there. They killed them. Ah, David Duchovny. <laughs> Mulder from X Files. Nice. Here lives Dave G. Murdered by a different fella named Dave G. It's a pile of bones that isn't moving around for a change. Dig through it. It's mostly just boring broken bones, but you do find a skull with a weird tag on it. You got an item. Skull with an odd tag on it. Wow. Very descriptive. This is one of those things that have... They have mausoleums. You know, one of those big marble things with drawers full of skeletons. Open a hole, but uh, let's leave him be for now. I love a hard challenge, even if I suck at video games. I don't suck at all video games, okay? I, I'm okay. But I've noticed if I'm recording and trying to play a game, I'm going to suck at it. So it doesn't really help my argument that I'm okay at video games. But anyways, I like challenges, and I'm going to fight a whole fucking bunch of them. Okay, let's check them out. That 19 life, 24 life. It sucks that they're immune to poison. Let's pull out the snake. He's gonna whiff. Oh, I forgot she can hit all of them at once. Yeah, it's only 3 HP, but that's 9 when you think about it. I'm gonna take a bunch of damage, though. 9 HP. Ouch. Oh, man. We're gonna be hurting on this one. Let's hit him all again. I think I might be dead. Yeah. Yeah, that was dumb of me. Ah, oh, come on. Damn it. I just... You get an effect angry. I'm not sure what possessed you to think opening all those drawers at once was a good idea. Yeah, I mean... Either. Can I do it again? I can. And I really feel like I can do this. <laughs> You guys are going to be so pissed, but I think I can do it, okay? Alright, we're going to raise Moxie so we raise our damage. We're going to boom, boom, twice. I hope that was a good idea. That's one of the things with uh, doing a Let's Play is you can't really... You can't sit here and stop and examine all this stuff, which I try to, but it holds you up from playing, and people don't want to sit, sit there and watch you examine all this stuff for a better playing experience. They just want to see you play. And it's easier to look at stuff from an outside perspective. I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat him. So here's the plan. Oh look, see, I do eight to nine damage now. You don't think I can take him now? All right. Why are they all? They're all stronger now. Well, screw it. This is the mysticality one. He does a lot of damage dead see we got this four four get out of here I got your number it's about to be nine one one shoot him What is it? Oh, the, yeah, that's fine. See, I don't know what the combat grid is. Turn on ground level indicator and combat and positioning. Like, what's the point of that? Yeah, I really don't see the point of that. Okay. Because you don't move. I don't know. Hopefully I get, like, a bigger reward because I took out all three of them at once. Three up and three down is a thing they should say about this if baseball analogies were a thing now. <laughs> you gain 30 XP. You get an item. Handful of loose teeth, gold tooth, skeleton bone sculptures. Alice studies the remains of your end of truth. Her eyes light up. Evidently, she's had an epiphany of some sort. Alice has become stronger. Nice! I can do it again? 
I mean, that's good experience. So, kill the mysticality one. Boom. Now she does five damage to all. I wonder if she'll get stronger too after this. Let's go back to shooting. Shoot. I'm going to take the other one out because Alice can kill this one. So, switch. You guys ever play like cheesy games and they're they're not they're not good games. <laughs> like they're they're bad. I mean I don't don't read into this, but I, I have a I have a point that I'm trying to make. So you you play these cheesy stupid games. They're usually like web browser games. They're not very much depth, but they've still constructed some kind of like combat or leveling system. That's what I feel with this game. Like the game is meant to be humorous. Like this game is essentially a joke. Like it's all it's all supposed to be fun and funny. It's supposed to be hilarious. But they've implemented this I don't want to say like it's not horror it's not it's not incredibly detailed or anything, but it's enough to like keep you intrigued and go, "Hey, I want to get stronger. I want to beat this." I want to see, like, what the next level brings, you know, that sort of thing. And that's, see, I can keep fighting these things. I'm going to keep fighting them and seeing if I get stronger. I mean, if nothing happens after this one, I mean, I still got 30 experience. I wonder if there's, like, a max level, too. And if there's, like, a joke behind that. It's like, um, you can't get any stronger. You already, you beat the game. Just hurry up. <laughs> All right. She can't kill him now. He has six life. <laughs> Good old Puffler fork up. <laughs> All right. I really do like this game, though. I I need to go back and play Kingdom of Loathing. If you guys haven't played it, this game costs money. But if you go on, um, just go on Google and Google Kingdom of Loathing. You'll find it. It's a browser game, and it's very similar to this. Except it's like, hey, click to go here. There's no animation. Like, it's it's just uh, from page to page. But it's still funny. Like, they still make the same kind of jokes and stuff. And it's going to be a different... It's it's going to be different. It's not like a sequel. It's just very much along the same lines, like, genre and gameplay-wise. Uh, um, yeah, Alice became stronger again. Uh, Alright, well, I'm going to... I'm going to do this two more times, guys. I'm sorry. I'm just going to I'm just going to make it easier. They're getting stronger too. And I'm wondering if the enemies scale with you. See the fact that she does 7 to all of them. If I can get her to do like 9 or 11 damage, that's pretty insane. See like now I don't even I'm going to shoot him and then probably not kill him with my main character and then boom they're both dead the battles are getting like 10 times easier now like I can run through these now I I think I think they kind of overlooked this I don't think they should have let you do this over and over again because I don't think this is a, oh what is this Alice will instantly destroy a skeleton oh that's cool too bad I don't want it um yeah, I think they screwed up. I don't think they should have let you do this over and over again. Because you're going to be able to gain levels and get too strong for the game. And for some reason, I'm doing reduced damage. Oh, because these guys have gotten stronger, so their moxie has gone up. Yeah, because they're, they're doing quite a bit now. I'm going to stab this dude, just because I can. It's not going to kill him. Oh, it might kill him. No, it didn't. But she's going to kill all of them. Boom. See her uh, shooting isn't affected by isn't affected by Moxie. I'm gonna do one more just until she goes up level. Oh, see they're back down on level again. At least their life is back down. I don't know, but his Moxie's up because I used to kill him in one hit. 
Not that it's a big deal. I use her to hit him afterwards anyways. Okay. Yeah, because they're, they're doing quite a bit of damage to me. I was hoping she'd go up another level. I'm going to do it until she goes up one more level. I don't know if she, like, goes even, even... Uh, well, she has a rank. Okay. And I bet you her rank is... Her mysticality is hot. Um, I, I bet her rank is based off from... Uh, Oh, wow. See, I didn't do shit for damage to him. Their stats are getting higher and higher. Alright, let's do this. We're going to instantly destroy this skeleton. <laughs> she just pulled out a saw. <laughs> Cut him up. I wonder if it was a bone saw. Uh, got him. <laughs> Alright, let's shoot him. Damn, that sucks. I'm going to have to do it again. It's a good skill, though. That's really good, because I imagine I'm going to go to a few more graveyards. Especially since there's a uh, quote-unquote necromancer running around. That's funny. That's, this is a pretty charming game. <laughs> Oh, damn it. She still didn't level up. Alright, let's see. 9 to 12, 9 to 12, 6 to 9. Ouch. Um, I guess let's just hit him with it. Have you do the bone saw on him. That skill is almost kind of cheap. So if I run into some kind of, like, skeleton boss, is it going to kill him in one? In one hit, probably. But there's probably a bonus to having different com companions, too. I don't know. I wonder, like... I wonder if there's different companions you can get after that first area or not. I don't know. We'll find out. And I was hoping, uh, like, the gear I was putting on, like the boots and stuff, <laughs> my character would actually wear them. The only thing he actually wears is a hat. That's kind of disappointing, and I wanted him to like be decked out based on what you equip. That would have been fun. Alright. Okay, sweet. She did level up. Nice. Oh, and I didn't even think about it. I've been getting all this experience. I'm at 248 experience now. Oh, shit. What should I do? I can level this up. This costs 200 experience, though. Deploy snake. Oh, the snake gets bigger. That's cool. And hammer. This is the one that... Okay. That's cool. So next level, it's going to go, say it does 5, then 8, then 11 after that. That's pretty sweet. That's a lot of damage. Oh, I don't know. I feel like I should just raise my, raise my base stats. I don't really use spells. What's grit? Okay. Life, basically. This is... Speed, AP, and spleen capacity. I. <laughs> Glamour. Yeah, that's kind of good. Oh, God. 200 is really not going to go that far. That's kind of all I'm thinking. I wonder if this does. The Deadeye will affect Fanhammer in the way that. You know, we're going to. Let's level up Deadeye. Ooh. 60. 100. That's up quite a bit. But I bet you we're going to do a shit ton of damage now. Okay. Now let's raise Moxie. Okay. Now we can raise. What's this one? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's raise that too. Alright. Cool. Well, I think that's going to open up a lot more options to us. Ooh. 
It's a kind of a ritual circle drawn on the ground. It's a big stone sarcophagus. What is this? This is a pile of mostly burned rags that maybe used to be a person. Investigate. You dig through the rags and find a few things that look like they're worth keeping. You got an item. Gore splattered scroll. Human ashes. There's some kind of receipt here. You got a robe receipt. Really? <laughs> Necromancer left behind a clue. His receipt from Walmart. Some kind of re yeah, yeah, I read that. Ooh. But this one isn't lit. Can I light it? Will that do something? It looks like it's lit now, doesn't it? Because of my lantern. This one's not lit either. I forgot I could jump. I don't know what good that does, but... Okay, I guess there's nothing to do in there. I'm gonna miss missing something again, aren't I? Okay, that doesn't do anything. Yeah, that's right, walk on your hands. I can't do anything with that, or that. I guess we're done here. I'm angry. Let's talk to my partner. Don't like this. Don't like this. Like one bit of this. Well, if you're going to hunt down that necromancer, this looks like a good place to start. Watch out for those pile of bones. I can tell just looking at them that they're ready to jump up and fight. All right. We'll be ready. Right. Yeah, I think we're done here. All right. Let's go to um, Cavern Canyon. You come across the corpse of a cowboy. How do you know it's the corpse of a cowboy? Well, you see by his outfit that he is a cowboy. You see by his lack of flesh that he is a corpse. <laughs> All right, check for useful gear. He won't be. He won't be needing these pants anymore. Thick chaps. <laughs> I'll put them to good use. Won't cover my ass for shit, but. All right. So I still have bean stained pants on, which give me spell damage. Yeah. Your pants. What is your stuff? Your gear, your hands, your pants. All right, let's put on my pants. Your rings, your boots, your weapons, your pistols, lapel embellishments. Oh, your hats, other stuff, consumables, your gear, everything. All right. I can't harvest. I wonder how you get foraging. Foraging. Let's go in here. Let's go in the last door. Uh oh. I gotta sneak. Wait, why are we here? I forget. Guys, rem remind me why I'm here? Hello? Nobody's gonna tell me? Fine, fuck you guys. Ask one simple question, nobody fucking answer me. Okay, you're really pushing your luck here. If you get any closer, they're definitely going to attack you. Okay, then. Oh, I think I got these guys. I think this is in the bag. Wait. Try to shoot this target. We'll hit a sturdy barrel instead. Oh. Okay, so let's. What are we gonna do? Let's go ahead and shoot the barrel. Actually, no, we're just gonna shoot this dude. And then this is gonna do nine damage to everyone. Boom! Even the barrel. This is the striped hat gag. <laughs> I think it really is. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna shoot you. She's so powerful now. That's ridiculous. I'm glad we stayed and attacked all the skeletons. And it made me think like it wasn't doable because I had lost the first time and it was like, really? You chose to do that? Put an end to the stripy hat gang's reign of bad taste. Take the leader's tattooed tooth. A tattooed tooth. As a means of identifying him. You got an item, tattooed tooth. You also take one of those horrible hats as a souvenir. I can wear it too. It'll give me minus three moxie. 
It's like really bad for me. Danger kitchen. Danger bar. Okay. I'm using. <laughs> I'm pogoing off from the lantern. <laughs> That's funny. Alright, let's go to the bar. Skeleton. Maybe they killed him for playing the jaw harp too much. I got jaw harp. A few full bottles left on the shelf. Nice. My partner would like it. She's an alcoholic. Yes, yeah, Sly. Oh, that was awesome. I was riding the lantern. Yes. That's awesome. Uh-oh. Hey, what's going on, man? Four chefs chained to the wall. His eyes widen as you approach. Hey, you're not one of them. Are you here to rescue me? Sure. Oh, thank goodness. He thrusts his hand into yours and shakes vigorously. I'm Doug. Huffler. How do you, how do, you do, Doug? Well, I've been chained up in the dank cave for weeks cooking for those stripy hatted idiots. That sounds awful. You know what was... You want to know the worst part? There's a perfectly good oven eight feet to my right, a shelf of perfectly good ingredients eight feet to my left. Uh, how's that the worst part? This chain is only four feet long. Ah, that's rough. I know, right? There I was, fresh out of culinary school, with a million meat idea in my head. Now here I am, four feet shy of my dreams, cooking the same pot of soup over and over again. What million meat idea? You, uh, you promised not to steal my idea, right? <laughs> well, uh, I mean, a million dollars or me is a million me. Everybody has their price. I promise I'm not gonna steal the fucking goddamn it. Yes, I promise. Okay, then it's a new kind of sandwich, or maybe a taco. It's so revolutionary that I'm not quite sure where it fits in the whole hand food taxonomy, to be honest. Anyway, in the middle of it, there's a sausage. But it's sausage made from the cheapest possible parts of the pig. Ground up so finely that you can't identify them anymore. Okay. And it's served in a long split roll which soaks up the grease so you can't tell how fatty the sausage is. Um, and the best part? The name. You ready to hear the name? Ugh, no. I call it the Hot Doug. What do you think? Uh, how about the Hot Puffler instead? Ah, uh, that's a great name. Hot Puffler. Everybody wants a Hot Puffler in or around their mouth. Come on now. Don't be ridiculous. Hot Puffler. What does that even mean? <laughs> ridiculous. Hey, there's no need to be mean about it. Besides, not that any of this even matters. Even if I did get off this chain, it's no point in hanging around in this empty cave making hot dogs just for myself. I don't even like the taste of them. You could set up a shop in dirt water. Brilliant! You're a genius, Puffler. Hot, du uh, hot dogs for sale all day, every day. I'll make a mince. Say, there's an idea. What if I added mints to the sausage mixture? I don't know about that. You help him break his chains. He leaves the cave, hauling the oven and the shelf full of ingredients, muttering to himself about new sausage recipes. That's that, then. Uh, I should have been Hot Puffler. I wish I could have talked into it. It's a brilliant name. For dick shaped meat. Like, if you were gonna eat something shaped like a dick, which would be a hot dog, wouldn't it be amazing if the name was Hot Puffler? Don't you want a hot puffler in your mouth? Everybody wants a hot puffler in their mouth. Don't lie to me, guys. Come on. You can't get past this pile of junk without hurting yourself, and it's not worth hurting yourself over. But I can go in the other entrance. Wait. Is this the entrance? Okay. Can I go in here? Pry off the boards. Oh, I have the crowbar. Nice. Those boards can't hide from your prying eyes. Your prying crowbar. Get in there. Let's go in here. Oh, yeah. Okay, what the fuck was the point of that? Really? Danger spider. This door has like 15 deadbolts on it. The note tacked to it says, Please don't open this door unless you want to get eaten by a giant spider. Even then, don't open it because the rest of us don't want to get eaten by a spider. It isn't even signed, so you can hardly be expected to take it seriously. 
I don't know, guys. Do I go in the door? It probably really is a giant ass spider. But I think I can take it. I told you I like challenges. Tunnel behind the. Oh my god, my body disappeared. That's creepy. The tunnel behind this. I'm just a floating head now. The tunnel behind this opening goes straight up. There's no way to get through in it unless you're a huge spider. Well, that was fucking stupid. God damn it. Weapons. This crate has weapons. Scrawled on it in black paint. Open it up. Dig through the crate. It's mostly full of packing straw, but you find a pretty fancy knife at the bottom. You got an item. Fancy knife. You hear a sudden chittering coming from that big hole behind you. <gasps> it's the spider. Hold on, let me check the knife. Three to moxie for a spider. Oh, but I like the idea of skinning. Beast. That's the only problem. <sighs> but this makes me better at... With guns. I would do a lot of damage. Okay. Fuck skin and beast. Oh, damn it. What? I didn't mean to not... I didn't mean to leave. Oh my god. There was shit in there. I could have taken the spider. No. Can I, like... <sighs> I fucked up. Again. Ugh, don't be a pussy. Come on. Go back in the hole. That's not fair. I could have taken. I could have taken it, but I'll never know, cause I'm dumbass. Ugh. Moving on. Let's go to Fort Cowardice. Your keen eyes detect a secluded cave in the near distance. Exploring it would definitely be a good use of your time. You discovered a new map location, Shaggy Dog Cave. Sure, let's go there now. Wait, how did I discover it from way up there? <laughs> um, sir, I, I found a new location. Oh, you must have found it walking along the path. Yeah, it's about 10 miles from here. How the fuck? Like, what do you want? It's an old mission not far from here. They might let you check out their catacombs if you ask us. Oh, that sounds awesome, I suppose. Okay, cool. It's weird for you to bring that up now. Okay. Still don't have enough foraging. Alright, let's check this out. She usually doesn't come in with me to places. Boy, look at all those plaques on the wall. Think they're important? Probably not, but if you don't read them, you'll never know. Ugh. There's a plaque bolt to the cave wall here. Read it. Record of the events of the exp uh, expedition to and into Shaggy Dog Cave, November 1887. As recorded by Jim Plackwright. Leave. There's a plaque bolt to the wall here. Read it. Having acquired through various and sundry means a story which is interesting in its own right, but better saved for another time. A map purporting to be to lead to a large cache of jewels, ingots of precious metals, and by the infamous highway manager named Robert Black Cole Jr. in the years before the cows came home. I, Jim Plackwright, along with three compatriots, those being Nathaniel Women Women, <laughs> uh, Cyrus Howard, and Douglas Watts, set out to find Shaggy Dog Cave and the aforementioned treasure. Leave. It's just like a museum. Read it. Our equipment and provisions consisted of one cart and a horse to pull it, four additional horses to be ridden, two shovels, a spade, and a mounting pick, a large coil of rope, one large basket of eggs, as well as an assortment of other trail provisions and cookware, my own collection of bank, blank plaques and engraving tools, one large shaggy dog, and a butt for. What's a butt for? What's the butt for? What's the butt for? Uh... 
I'm done. <laughs> Uh, after traveling for two and a half days to the south and east, we arrived at a small town named Dirtwater, the largest settlement in the vicinity of Shaggy Dog Cave, leaving the dog to watch the horses the four of us enter the local saloon, and each ordered a beer, except for Sai, who was satisfied with water. Wait, but it's dirt water. Oh, dirt water is fucking nasty. Ew. All right, read it. The barman provided our drinks as requested, and then withdrew a small wooden box from an eighth bar asking us if we'd cared to witness something real interesting. Considering that we still had a f quite a few hours left to travel, we politely declined and asked him if he knew the way to Shaggy Dog Cave. He replied that he had never been there personally, but gave us rough directions, which correlated nicely with the notes on our map. Ride that lantern. Ride that spicy chicken. Read it. Upon leaving the saloon, we discovered to our dismay that some unknown villain had tampered with our wagon. Fortunately, the only supplies missing were the butt for. What's the butt for? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I laugh at stupid ass shit. <laughs> and the entire basket of eggs, apart from one that Doug had concealed within a pocket for safety keeping. He also discovered that the dog had absconded with one of the horses, forcing Nate and Sai after... A drawing of lots to share. Okay. Alright. Dude, I'm done with the fucking plaques. Oh my god. After acquiring a barrel of fresh water for the trip, as well as replacement butt for. Oh my god, what is butt for? We. Is this gonna be a gag? Like, it's gonna be like you asked what butt for was, didn't you? We headed out into the open desert. The sun shone down merciless upon us, though we took small solace in the fact that it would have been far more intolerable had we made this expedition during the summer months rather than November. In order to pass the time on the trip and resist becoming days from the heat and susceptible to desert mirages, we exchanged stories of our youth, which I will not be retelling here for reasons of length. Yeah, because this isn't fucking long enough. Jesus Christ. However, I will relate to you three odd occurrences that happened to us during our trek through the desert. The first was two or three hours out of dirt water when Nate noticed a glint of sunlight upon a metal, a metallic object partially buried in the sand. This was revealed to be a brass oil lamp of foreign design and manufacture, which fortuitously, fortuitously still contained a quantity of oil. Deciding this might come in handy, we stashed it in the wagon with our other tools. What is the point of this? Oh my god. Our next encounter was with a nomadic goblin tribesman, who we discovered spoke excellent English, and inquired as to our destination. We replied, re replied, replied that we were looking for Shaggy Dog Cave, though we did not disclose the reason for our journey. The goblin confirmed that we were heading on the correct course, and mentioned that he had only a short time earlier... Wait, oh, what, the, what? Mentioned that he had only a short time earlier witnessed a large and shaggy dog riding a horse in the same direction. We all agreed that this was an unusual sight indeed and continued on our way. The dog was riding the fucking horse. I mean, I guess it was weird that the dog took the horse in the first place, but the fact that he rides is even stranger. Sometime later, we encountered a large adobe hut. Uh, I guess it's adobe, actually. Adobe hut. Occupied by two identical seeming old men with wild hair and long white beards. They invited us to take shelter from the heat, which we gratefully accepted, and introduced themselves as hermits. This st struck me as peculiar given that there were two of them, but I felt it would be rude to question them on that point. One of the hermits confirmed that we were near Shaggy Dog Cave, and the other hermit confirmed that what his brother said was true. They also commented that they had seen a large and shaggy dog riding a horse in that direction. We all agreed that this was an unusual sight indeed. The hermits refreshed our water supply in exchange for our butt for. Oh my god. It's so annoying because I don't know what butt for is. Is that a real thing? I don't know. And we continued on our way, excited to finally be nearing our goal. After two more hours, we finally arrived at Shaggy Dog Cave, carefully keeping our excitement in check lest we become incautious. 
We unloaded our equipment and supplies from the wagon and took a brief respite in the cool shade of the cave entrance. To celebrate our arrival, Doug unpocketed... Wait, Doug. The, do the cook? Unpocketed and shared the egg he had saved from our basket that had been stolen in dirt water. Once we were rested, we decided the time had come to explore the cave. That wasn't this cave, though. That was another cave. Discovering that we had neglected to pack torches, lanterns, or any other light source which, with which to illuminate the cave, we declared that it was indeed fortuitous that Nate had discovered that antique oil lamp during our travels. He gave the brass a quick shine and then lit the wick, and we were relieved to discover that it lit easily and provided a very adequate amount of light. As we headed into the cave, we were further encouraged by the fact that the floor was quite even and easy to traverse, and there were no side passages that which might cause us to become lost. Despite this, I resolved to hang a number of plaques to mark our progress to the cave and engrave them with the tale of our journey such that others who discovered the cave after us might be entertained and, and edified by our story. I ought to be annoyed if there's fucking nothing at the end of this. Soon we came to the end of the tunnel. While Nate, Sai, and Dub took turns with the excavation, I completed the last of the aforementioned plates. Plaques. Not plates. Plaques. It was a matter of perhaps an hour before Sai's shovel struck a wooden surface with a hollow noise, and we hauled a traditionally styled treasure chest out of the hole with great excitement. The chest was locked with an ancient and rusting iron padlock, which broke easily from a single, single, sh single swing, swing, from a single swing of our pickaxe. We opened the lid slowly, and the flickering light of the antique oil lamp shone brightly upon jewels of every color and shining ingots of precious metals, just as promised by the legends of Black Cole Jr. Joyous at our triumph, we loaded the chest. Uh, the chest into our wagon and began the journey home. Thank you for reading. May your own endeavors be equally successful. Signed, Jim Plackwright. <laughs> this better have something in it. Are you fucking serious right now? Are you? Are you serious? I just read all that for nothing. <sighs> okay. We need to take a breather before I reformat my hard drive. <laughs> oh my god, what a giant waste of time. This game is so fucking troll. You gotta be fucking kidding me. I read every single one of those plaques for nothing. I'm gonna count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 16 motherfucking plaques. <sighs> Everything I know is a lie. The cake is a lie. There was no cake at the end of the fucking tunnel and I, that I thought the plaques would lead me to. <sighs> yeah, do a fucking handstand on the fucking lantern. Fall, crack the lantern, and light your face on fire. That's what's gonna happen. The aristocrat crats. What? Uh -huh. Never mind. Okay. That bitch told me to read it. I'm gonna kill her. Oh. Okay, guys. That's all the time we have for this episode. Thank you, kittens, for joining me again. And I will see you guys next time on Curses Gaming in another episode of West of Loathing. Because I am starting to loathe the troll of this game. Alright guys, see you next time. Bye!